We're going to be covering the five red flags every agent should know about decks, common issues to avoid, and as Martin mentioned, the Q&A, getting right into it, number five. No lag screws in the ledger board. The board that's running kind of horizontally lower left to upper right across the photo there is the ledger board. If the deck is attached to the house, it needs to have a ledger board. As this one has done, they're bolting it through to the structure of the home behind. Side note, they've also done a really nice job and installed joist hangers for the deck joist to tie into. That's the slightly out of focus metal object under the hand. Very nicely done there. The biggest issue with no lag screws in the ledger board is if the deck is overweighted and only held on with nails at the home attachment, the nails can sag, remove, basically get pulled out as the deck joists sag under the weight of the people and whatever else is on the deck. And then grandma and the lit grill and everybody else goes rolling up to the house as the deck detaches and falls towards the ground near the house. We always check for bolts, be they through bolts like this or lag screws, which is basically just an industrial strength wood screw. We always look for washers so that the nut that's gone onto that bolt doesn't just compress the wood fibers and end up tearing out a big hole in the ledger board. And on the inside, when we're doing the inspections of the crawl space side, we always look for water damage on the band board sill plate in the vicinity of the decks. We also try to look at decks for flashing, make sure that they're flashed properly where it attaches to the house. If you and clients are going around the exterior of a house that they're looking at, you can sometimes just stick your head under, or if the deck is high enough, you can look up and see those things yourself. You don't have to see bolts at every joist space. Every other or every third uh, is, and it's dependent upon the code compliance issues, but seeing bolts, always a plus. Number four, a poor deck foundation. Decks are pretty simple structures. It's basically an exterior version of what's going on inside the house, nine times out of ten. Having proper footings for the posts to rest on, making sure that the joists are level. Another little side note, the human eye is capable of discerning one thirty-second of an inch of displacement in a board that's 16 feet long. So if you look across a board and you see it dipping or sagging, trust yourself. You're probably right. That thing has moved and either needs to be shored up or repaired, and that's something that you can advise your clients about as well. You'll occasionally see in inspection reports from us a picture of one of our really long screwdrivers stuffed into the ground near the bottom of a post at a deck, indicating that the piece in the ground has rotted. We check for all of those as we go probing around. Occasionally you'll hear us knocking and tapping on things. That's sounding to see if that piece is solid, whether it's split, whether it's rotted. All of those are cues that we use. Something y'all can do as easily as well. Tapping on a post will let you know whether it's solid or not. We always look for the landscaping under decks especially to make sure that no moisture is collecting down there. You don't want erosion that could cause the well-placed footers to end up failing because the soil's gone around them. And you don't want to have a low spot under the deck that ponds water growing mosquitoes right under where everybody's going to be hanging out. Number three. Not enough deck safety. Looking at the photo on the right, the vertical pieces are balusters. Another minor side note, pickets on a fence, balusters on a rail. The balusters are oriented vertically like that because if they're horizontal, they basically just make a, a really good ladder for a curious child. Children don't have the hand and arm strength to grab high enough to pull themselves up on vertical balusters to get into any kind of dangerous situation. Spacing on the balusters will determine 
when the deck was originally built. Newer code compliance requires not being able to pass a four inch ball, a four inch sphere, anywhere through any of the spacing on that below the rail. Older standards are kept into, uh, or kept in mind, I should say, as we look at older properties. With access to a pool, any access from the deck to the pool has to have a self-closing, self-latching gate. That's a legal liability, not just a wanting everyone to stay as safe as they can liability. Um, another thing for pools, all of the exterior gates that exit to the yard need to be self-closing, self-latching as well. With deck safety comes the deck boards themselves. We always check to make sure that the boards are as solid as they can be. We check to make sure that the fasteners are in place. The nail heads that you can see in the picture on the left, we always try to make sure that we, and occasionally you'll see us dragging our feet. It's not because we're lazy. We're checking for floor height level in the house, and we're checking for nails that have popped up out on the deck. If a nail has popped up, it can A, be a trip hazard, or B, be any type of an injury hazard if someone falls on it or is out there barefoot and catches their foot on it. If the boards are heavily splintered, that's something to look for as well. You don't want to have a deck that's very difficult to access just because someone pressure washed it too closely. Which brings me to another point, pressure washing. You always want to keep that pressure washer six to eight, maybe even ten inches off the surface of the deck so that you only remove the outer micron, just the little skin on the outside so that when you put your stain on, it bonds uniformly and is uniformly colored throughout. Another side note, picture on the right versus picture on the left. The deck on the right will end up lasting longer because of a full-bodied or colored stain. That provides a much better barrier against the sun's rays penetrating into the wood than a clear wood finish like had been used on the deck on the left. Number two, the weight of your party. Not only does the deck have to hold all of the people and the grill and beverage container, shall we say, you have to have the weight of the deck materials itself held. As you can see, one square foot, usually rated for about 40 pounds or so. The issue gets into play as a potential safety, going back to number one, no ledger board or improper attachment of the ledger board to the house. You heard me mention grandma on the lit grill earlier because that actually happened to clients of mine. I inspected the house. There were only nails attaching the deck to the house. I said, please fix this before you do any type of celebration in your new home. They chose to ignore me. Deck detached from the house. Grandma and the lit grill and everybody on it rolled over towards the house, thankfully. It wasn't a far fall, it was only a couple of feet, but it was enough to scare everybody. That's basically an answer to uh, the bottom question, what can too much weight lead to? Point number one, total collapse. A number of instances made big headlines several years back, uh, the biggest one being a series of fatalities at, uh, I believe it was UVA, where an upper balcony collapsed onto people below. It was never secured with bolts. That's not the way things were built back then. Now we know better, and we want to make sure that the decks are as safe as they can. So it may seem to be a little odd that we're stressing all of this safety for deck things, especially if it's a fairly low deck outside. But it's any type of injury that could be sustained by a guest or the buyer that's a concern for us. Power washing, point number one here again, keep that nozzle off the surface. The growth rings that we were all taught as children to count to read the age of the tree, the darker stripe is the winter growth ring. It's a thinner stripe because it's a thicker, denser wood. It's made in more adverse conditions than the wider, thinner stripe, or the, the wider, lighter colored stripe, that's the spring and summer growth. 
if you get too close to the deck with the pressure washer, you cut away the soft stuff and you leave the dark or thicker ridges. That's why driftwood has that particular appearance. It's the growth rings that give it that kind of ribbed appearance. You don't want to have that on your deck. The landscaping outside plays a vital role in this too. A, you don't want the soil moved around so that you direct water under the deck or cause any type of erosion issues. And you want to make sure that you can get plenty of sunlight and airflow to the deck so that you don't grow mildew and fungus or any type of stuff that makes you have to clean it faster than you would otherwise. If you're not going to be occupying the deck for a while and the sun's going to be beating on it, you may want to move the furniture and pieces that are on it around some so that you don't end up having a stain that is not as faded as the rest. I'm certain you've all been into the dining room of a home somewhere and easily seen where the now vacant house has that beautiful rectangle in the dining room of differently colored wood because it was under the rug. You don't want to have that out on the deck either.